Thank you, ladies. We will not play a special in song. And thank God for the promises that you sing about that we don't have to cross Jordan alone. We have a Savior that's with us. I know I say that a lot of times, but I'll never say it too often. We have a Savior that's with us through thick and thin. Even though many times we don't deserve His presence there, He says, I'll be there. I want to talk tonight about a spirit-filled Christian. <laughs> I hope we all are. All of us have, from Jim and Matt and Wink up on the front row, all the way back to David, Pam, and Karen on the back row on this side, and uh, Dennis and the ladies, other ladies in the back row have access to the Spirit of God through thick or thin. And I want to talk about the importance of it. You know, we all know that God the Father of the God period was in the creation. Jesus was there and God the Holy Spirit was there. The Trinity is hard to, for some people to understand. But as we were talking after services Wednesday night, some of us was visiting a little bit. But in order for us to see and understand many of the promises that God has in His Word, we must have the spiritual eyes. And the reason a lot of people can't see and understand many of the teachings of the Bible because they're looking through human eyes or physical eyes and you just can't see it. You must look through the spiritual eyes. And this is why the words that Jesus told to Nicodemus is very important. The little bit I'll say to this, that the man is born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. And this is why a lot of people run around blind as a psychologist, sociology teacher, the animal says like a blind dog in a meat house, not knowing which way to turn and, and looking to every temptation that seems like is, is before them. It's because we're looking through physical eyes instead of spiritual eyes. And what we need to do is get in turn, in tune with the Spirit of God and with the Holy Spirit and God's Spirit and see what he has there. Okay, God, all oh, the Trinity was in part of the creation, and we understand the fact that God the Father was in his place of authority and the place of paradise, and we understand the fact that God the Son was set that we may have a sacrifice, that we may have a way out, which was God and a Trinity's plan of salvation. And again, don't anybody try to change it as God's plan. Some of our Pentecostal folks say that it lies in emotions. And I was listening to a Pentecostal preacher this morning uh, on the radio, radio, saying that salvation is not emotional. And I was glad to see him bring that point out. He says that it's faith in Jesus Christ is when we get saved. Now, after that, I didn't agree too much with him, but on this point, I did. Salvation, some people have emotion to it, but it isn't always emotions. So what is the work of the Holy Spirit? What is the Spirit, or what does it mean when Paul says that you and I need to be filled with the Spirit? This is our thoughts tonight, and I want to use the text that passes the Scripture found in the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians, chapter number 5, and verses 18 through, and including... 21. Ephesians chapter number 5, verses 18, 19, 20, and 21. And the writer Paul says, And be not drunk with wine, and with, and which is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You know, that's a good way to fight depression, is to do and put to practice what Paul says here. Speaking to yourself. Yeah, he says, even talk to yourself. And psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for all the things unto God and the Father, uh, in the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, this is why we pray in the name of Jesus, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Let's bow, please, for prayer. Again, Father, we thank you for this day and for the many blessings of it. And Father, thank you for the love that you had for us, that you sent Jesus to die on the cross, and if we accept him, him as our Savior, we have the two guarantees, one of eternal life, and also the guarantee of a victorious life, while we're here in the Father, thank you for the many blessings of this day. 
Thank you, Father, for the special day in which our nation is set aside to, to pay tribute to our mothers. And, Father, we thank you for the Christian mothers that, that we have. Thank you, Father, for their love and dedication and surrendering to your will and raising the children in the way that they should go and when they're old will not be far from them. Father, we thank you for our service this far tonight. We pray, Father, that each of us would open our hearts, open our minds, and seek out what you'd have for us to receive here tonight. And again, Father, when the time of decision comes, if there's any decisions that need to be made public, we pray, Father, that they will be made for your glory and for your praise. Thank you again, Father, for Jesus. For it's in his precious name we pray. Amen. If we had a title for the message tonight, it would be The Abundant Life in the Spirit is a Spirit-Filled Life. It's warm up here. I don't know about back there, but it sure is up here. So excuse me for starting the cold taking off season early. This is probably early so I'm taking it off for a while, so, but don't, you know, uh, we'll worry about that too much. But anyway, it's warm up here. Just a few moments of your time tonight to think about the thought of a spirit-filled life and why Paul put this passage of Scripture in his word to the Ephesian church. Now again, it didn't seem like that the church here was having a problem, as I am with my book. Hmm. I know why he put four fingers in the thumb, not to unbutton buttons. Spirit field, why he put here such an important part behind it. He commands the church here in the letter to at the Ephesus, Ephesians. Uh, the fifth chapter in verse number 18, Be not drunk with wine, in which is excess, but the word here in the last part of this verse is where I want to, to think on just a few moments. But be filled with the Spirit of God. But be filled with the Spirit of God. Why did Paul put this there? Why did Paul command, now he did command, that the church, and the church is not the building, but the people on the inside, Paul put such emphasis on that the church, each member, whether male, female, the preacher, the deacons, or, or the Sunday school, the training and the teacher, should be filled with the Spirit. And what is being filled with the Spirit and what does it really mean? Now, a lot of people say that you're not filled with the Spirit until you say some outward expressions or, or speaking in an unknown tongue or speaking in a dialect that no one else knows what you're talking about. I don't believe this is what Paul is talking about here. And by the way, if you haven't done much of a study and being baptized in the Spirit, every place that, practically, the majority of the places that there was being practiced, they caused the division among its members. And the Spirit of God was not a dividing factor. It should not be a dividing factor. It should draw us closer together. So we're not going to talk too much about speaking in tongues. We're not going to talk too much about being a, a spirit of confusion. But what is that Paul said that be filled, that be filled with the Spirit of God, that be filled with God's precious empowering Holy Spirit. But over in the book of Acts, we won't turn to read it, but it says in, 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 in chapter number 20, chapter number 8, verse number 26, to be filled with the Spirit, you must be Spirit-possessed, Spirit-empowered, Spirit-led, and Spirit-controlled. Now that's a four-point message that we'll just think on just a few moments. But being filled with the Spirit is being Spirit-possessed. Every ounce of laying up at the Spirit filled and Spirit-possessed and Spirit-empowered and Spirit-led and spirit control, and not a spirit of confusion, not a spirit of doubt, not a spirit of, of, of lack of understanding, but a spirit of knowing what's going on, a spirit of, of, of power, as the writer of Acts brought up in, in chapter number 8. So to be filled with the spirit is to be spirit-possessed, spirit-powered, Empowered, spirit led, and spirit controlled. Okay, with this thought in mind, you are filled with the spirit for a reason. You are spirit filled with the spirit of God for a reason. Because throughout all of God's word, He never did do one thing without a purpose behind it. 
And Jesus Christ told his disciples that when I 